Okay, this is Michael Pepper for MMABay.co.uk in association with FightDentist.com with Ed Suarez, the manager of many top Brazilian MMA fighters, including Anderson Silva and Lyoto Machida. Thanks for joining us today, Ed. Hey, no problem, man. Big fight coming up at the weekend. Uh, Antonio Nogueira's fighting Randy Couture, headlining UFC 102. How's he feeling ahead of the fight? Man, he's feeling great. This is the best, um, you know, we've seen him feel God, as far as I can remember. I mean, uh, I can guarantee you this is the best he's been uh, in comparison to any of his other appearances in the UFC. So I think, uh, you know, I think he's going to have a great performance. He had a good training camp. He's very focused, um, and he's ready to go, man. Can you put to bed any of the any of the rumours that have been on the internet this past week that, that maybe he's suffered a little bit in his training camp this time around? I mean, you've just mentioned that oh, he's had a... Not at all. That, 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 that's a complete rumour, man. It's, yeah. It's kind of funny. Oh, yeah, he had a great training camp, man. I mean, he had... Uh, I mean, honestly, it's like the best I've ever seen him look. I mean, he had a new strength and conditioning coach and speed and agility, and he's just moving around the ring much better. Um you know, he probably lost about uh, about eight to ten pounds compared to where he he's been fighting at at his last few fights. So he feels much quicker. He feels much lighter on his feet. Um, I, I saw something on the internet saying that he was knocked out or something. It's, I mean, he's never been knocked out, especially not in a training camp. I mean, it was it was just uh, you know I don't know where these people come up with this stuff. Okay, do you think Nagara is the type of fighter that gets better with age? Um. You know, I think time will tell. I think, uh, you know, I think his, his his past performances, his past three performances in the UFC, um, have not been um, have not been his best. Um, and I think uh, we're going to see a different Nogueira. I, I think that's a good question to ask after this Saturday night. But uh, we still believe that he's got uh, all the tools to become the champ again. And um, you know, that's what we're focused on. Right now, we've got Randy Couture standing in front of us, which is a big challenge, which everyone knows. I mean, he's fighting one of the you know, biggest legends in the sport. Um, you can never underestimate a guy like Randy Couture. I don't care how old he is. The guy always comes in shape. The guy always comes with a good strategy. So, uh, you know, we've got our work cut out for us next Saturday night, but I can guarantee you that uh, uh, Noguera is going to be 100%. Okay, uh, th- there was also a mention on last week's conference call uh, by Antonio that his brother might be coming to the UFC. Is there any light you can maybe shed on that? Yeah, well, I can confirm that his brother you know, might be coming to the UFC. Okay, but you can't really say anything more uh, at this time. Uh, not anything else. I, I, got, I have a feeling everything looks, is looking good, and I think uh, we'll probably see him, you know, if all goes well... Uh, before the end of the year fighting in the octagon. Okay, S- since we last spoke to you, you've uh, one of your fighters has captured another UFC title. This time, uh, Lyoto Machida was successful in capturing the 205-pound title. Uh, c- could you tell us a little bit about his evolution in the UFC since he's been there, you know, t- to the point now where he's champion himself? Well, I mean, you know, he's, um, you know, I think Dana White has said it the best. I mean, he said it in various press conferences that he felt that, you know, uh, Lyoto is one of the most technical uh, guys in the octagon, and that as soon as he felt comfortable inside the octagon, that he was going to dominate that place, and it's exactly what happened. I mean, I think uh, Lyoto finally feels comfortable in there. He's he, he feels like that's his home, and that's I think what was uh, that's what we were waiting for it to to happen. And I think that over his past two fights, he's been able to show his dominance in the uh, in the UFC. Okay, uh, Lyoto is back in action at UFC 104 in October. Uh, he fights Mauricio Shogun Rua. Uh, w- yeah. What kind of diff- different challenges does Shogun offer, and, and how's Machida uh, training camp going to be structured to deal with those sorts of challenges? Well, you know, I kind of leave up the strategies and what they're doing in the training camps up to the coaches that he has. I don't get, I don't get, you know, too involved in that part of the, in that part of the uh, game. Um, but I can tell you this. I can tell you that Mauricio Shogun Hua is, is a great fighter. He's a great champion. I mean, people always keep referring back to, oh, well, look at how he looked against Forrest Griffin or Mark Coleman. Well, anyone who's seen Shogun fight can, uh, 
So, I mean, Shogun has won the Open Weight Grand Prix. He's beaten some, you know, phenomenal fighters, and he's he's definitely a huge contender. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to this fight. I think it's going to be a great fight. you got two top-ranked Brazilians fighting each other. Um, you know, I still think uh, Mauricio Shogun Rua is one of the most dangerous guys in, in that category. I mean, uh, uh, a focused, a uh, well-prepared Shogun Ruha is, is is a very, very tough fighter. Okay, UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva was successful recently. UFC 101, uh, defeating Forrest Griffin very impressively. Um, there was a lot of talk after the fight, especially from Dana White, about putting Anderson together with Lyoto. Is, is there any circumstances that we might see that fight happen in the octagon, or is it just beyond the realms of possibility? Okay. Uh, of course, they train together every day. What what, what does that look like? Uh, the sparring sessions. It's like ballet, it's like watching a ballet. Could could you shed uh, a little bit of light on on Anderson's future? Is he is he going to be staying at light heavyweight for the time being? Um, well, right now, um, you know, he wants to fight against the best. Um, so regardless of what weight class that will be, I mean, he wants to fight the best. He wants to be involved in the biggest fights possible. So whether that's at 185, whether that's at 205, or who knows, maybe even at heavyweight. Okay, because I wanted to ask you about that. There was a rumor going around last week that maybe you'd approach the UFC about stepping up to heavyweight. Uh, Frank Mir's name was mentioned. Uh, is there any truth behind any of that? No, yeah, we just said that, you know, you know, we, we said that to Dana and Lorenzo before uh, his fight against Forrest, and we said, hey, you know, depending on how he does, who knows, maybe he can move up and fight heavyweight. Um, and my partner uh, mentioned uh, Frank Mir's name, and, and that was about it. Okay, do, do you think Anderson could compete against the, the really big heavyweights, the sort of Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin? Do you, do you think he'd be uh, competitive against those sorts of guys? I think Anderson Silva could be competitive against just about anybody. It was mentioned at the at the UFC 101 press conference that he'd be fighting Dan Henderson next, but it's been suggested by your camp since that maybe Dan should uh, should be fighting the winner of Nate Marquardt against Damian Meyer. Is that still your stance, and would you like another fight at light heavyweight in the meantime? Yeah, we would. You know, like I said, we want to be involved in some bigger fights. We'd like to fight. You know, I, I think. Dan Anderson fighting Nate Marquardt, the winner of Nate Marquardt and uh, Damian Maya. Um, I think that that would really, uh, really produce a number one contender. Um, uh, take nothing away from Dan Anderson; he's a great fighter. Um, you know, people always go, "Well, he's the only guy that beat Anderson for a round." And yeah, I mean, he won that round, the first round. But I mean, I don't think he really did anything to Anderson during that round. Um, he had him on the ground and. You know, he pretty much was tied up pretty well. The only thing he was doing was covering his mouth a little bit, trying to um, make it more difficult for Anderson to breathe. But, um, you know, in my heart, I, I just don't feel that he deserves a title shot yet. Um, you know, Dana and, and the UFC is, are, are, are going to do what they think is right. But, but I believe that the, the winner of Nate Marquardt and Damian Maya should fight uh, Dan Anderson for, um, for uh, the number one contender. I mean, I even think it would be interesting to see the winner of uh, Damian Maya, um, Nate Marquardt fight Dan Henderson for the interim title, and then the, the, the you know whoever wins the interim title fights Anderson for the title. Have you got any sponsors or any anything you'd like to mention before we wrap it up? Maybe Sinister? Yeah, well, yeah, sure, of course. You know, I, you know, Sinister is my brand, and you know, we love the support of all the fans all around the world that buy Sinister. We appreciate it, and thank you for the support. Okay, this has been Michael Pepper for MMABay.co.uk in association with FightDentist.com with Sinister owner uh, Ed Suarez. Thanks for joining us, Ed.